This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Bacon Sale. There's no Jake in the Bacon Cave. We have a guest, so the show is saved. He's scared, so he didn't dare to drive. Not sure how we're gonna survive. Jacob's gone. He's not here. He's absent. Afraid of snow, so you get Joel and Kent. And, and we, we see we've got Adrian here with me. Uh, we, us. us. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yay. Welcome to Bacon Cell. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And I'm Adrian. There you hey, go. Adrian. Hi. Yes, Jacob uh, was not able to make it to the Bacon Cave tonight, but we have our listener emeritus, our second listener ever. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Adrian Gray here is with us. Adrian, why don't you say hi? Hello. Thank you for having me back. No, oh, thank you. Hey, welcome back to the show. This is your third appearance because you, wow. you won, obviously, the first time you showed up. Yes. On, the, on the anniversary show. Yeah. yeah. And then you yes. lost the title. Uh, to I the was, current listener, Spencer. Yes, Spencer. Yeah. Well done. And yes. now you're back. But this is the first time in the Bacon Cave, so welcome. Yeah, the Bacon Cave is amazing. I was going to say, what's you know, we like to ask people when they come in, what's their favorite thing here in the Bacon Cave or aspect of the Bacon Cave? So just give a look around and anything strike your eye that you really Ooh, like. The smell. The smell. The bacon <laughs> smell. The bacon smell. The bacon smell. We do have, we do have uh, bacon air fresheners in every single uh, vent. In you here. don't think it's overkill yes. at all? Mm. No, I get headaches a lot, but I think it's just because of, you know, the water I drink. <laughs> the bacon grease from yeah, the, exactly. hot exactly. the hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was going to say thank you. Uh, I forgot to say thank you for listening to our last show, our Decade Dance oh, yeah. about action movies. We do have one more planned, so look forward to that. Uh, but I did want to uh, take a moment uh, today and read some of these uh, iTunes reviews from people uh, who've given us, who've been so kind to give us some iTunes reviews. So first of all, I want to read this one from Dover, Delaware Dude, which is a great name. Great alliteration. Yes, I do like it. He says, I really like this podcast. I'm amazed at all the research they do for every show. Thank oh, you. That's nice. I'm always learning stuff. They are funny and family friendly. That doesn't mean it's for kids. It's for adults. But you won't mind if your kids listen too. True. Also, look, always look forward to Monday mornings and sometimes on Friday as they really short episodes called Bacon Bits. Those are funny, too. So thank you, Dover, Delaware, dude. Nice. And then we have Crumpy Lady. I think I know who that is. Indeed. She says, over the last few years, these three guys have become one of our favorite podcasts to listen to. They are funny and banter to, and the banter together is always entertaining. Thanks for keeping us old people hip with the current pop culture. Old people, come on. We're excited to see on. where this podcast goes. I like, we're, we're, yeah. we're teaching old people how to be hip, but we're also old people. Yeah, exactly. So Adrian's not old people. It's we're old people. Oh, I, we're not throwing you under the bus. It's fine. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. And this uh, this last review, uh, iTunes review, I'd like to iTunes Apple Podcast review that I'd like to read today is from SC five four six three seven two eight one nine. What? Which is apparently a real person. Two four six zero one. They say seriously, this is a great podcast with new episodes each week. They are always coming up with new material. I listen on my commute and then again with my kids. Which I'm like, that's awesome. But I thought it wasn't okay for kids, but it kind of is. It is. No, that was the other one. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I yeah. know. I even go back and listen to old episodes. Aw. I like movies and find myself agreeing with Joel on his movie picks. Oh, that's why you chose Aww. this review. <laughs> but I love Kent's hipster recommendations. Yes. And I've found some great shows by giving his opinions a shot. Okay. See? Fantastic. It's good for both of us. Not Jake, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank He's you. not going to listen. He's thank you for here. these iTunes reviews. They mean a lot. They and do. They're nice words. And if you, I was going to say, take it, uh, take a moment, go to iTunes, give us a review. We love hearing from you. And yeah. you know, we'll be looking at some more of these, too, and, and reading them on the air. And speaking of helping the show out, we do actually have two new patrons to announce. So we're very, very pleased to have these people contribute to the show. Yes. First off, we have... Someone that's been listening forever. Yes. Steve Hansen. Steve Hansen. Steve Hansen is now a tier three patron. He is. And he's a great guy, too. I yeah. enjoy Steve Hansen. As much as his opinions are questionable, he's a good guy. <laughs> I believe his opinions are right all the time. No, you don't. I, I, I do. <laughs> not, that's not what you yes. say off the air. Stop that. And then also, we'd like to welcome Aaron Gamusio, the moose. Aaron, what? the moose, Gamusio. Yep. All right. No, I, that's, I don't know that's, who he is, but he sounds cool. He is a tier one patron. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, Aaron... Welcome. Thank you both, Steve and Aaron. Or should I call him Moose? Oh, well, he's Aaron the Moose. Should I call him the Moose? Thank you, you Steve and the Moose. Yeah, Steve and the Moose. Steve and the Moose. Not a band name? 
No. Oh, okay. We couldn't get the Shame. rights to that one. <laughs> so thank you, patrons. And speaking of patrons. Yes. And speaking of things we're doing, we have already started our 12 Days of Christmas giveaway with our Luminaria. Look every time on social media. Some posts will be marked as Luminaria posts. Yes. If you like and comment on those Luminaria posts, you will be entered to win a pair of tickets to Luminaria, which is an amazing electrical light Christmas event. In yeah, Thanksgiving down at Thanksgiving Point, Point. Which is a great venue for that type of thing. It's a really fun outing, and we hope you can join us. We'll be going. We'll be giving them out every day for the first twelve days of December, and then we'll be going. Us, Bacon Cell will be going on yes. December thirteenth, and we hope you can make it that night. If not, your tickets can be used another night. Yeah, go anytime. Exactly. Come hassle us. Maybe get some hot chocolate. Maybe. We don't we're know. Still, we're still not sure. <laughs> Jacob's not here to clarify if we get hot chocolate or not. But but yeah, we can't wait. It is December now, so yes. happy holidays to everyone. Yay! No, no Christmas shows. Well, let's move on. As of now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we do have Adrian here with us today. Yes. And we have some questions to ask you before we get into this show. Because content. we haven't asked you these questions, even though you've been right. on the show twice before. You've never gotten these questions. Let's so we, do it. We have here a series of questions. Yes, you know, not yes or no questions, but, you know, either or questions. And what we need you to do is answer them as fast as you can. And even if you don't really know, like if you don't have an yes. opinion, just give an answer. You'll make one of us very happy. Okay. There's no right or wrong answer, but there are right or wrong answers. I'm ready. So number one, which is better, Karate Kid or Karate Kid 2? Karate Kid 2. Hmm. Wow. Thank which you. is worse, Star Wars Episode 1 or Star Wars Episode 2? Episode which, 2. Okay. Which uh, Do you write movies using le- stars or letter grades? I really usually don't, but letter grades, I guess. All right. I use letter. Which is the more America movie, Rocky IV or Independence Day? Independence Day. Yes. On the anniversary of Rocky IV. That's sad. Is Night Before <gasps> Christmas? Oh. On the recording, not of an area. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> is Never for Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Oh, Halloween. Hmm. Correct. Uh, Buffy or X-Files? Buffy. Okay. Lord of the Rings or Star Wars? Oh, Lord of the Rings. So Which is more good. Christmassy, Die Hard or Lethal Weapon? I haven't seen either of them, but I guess Lethal Weapon? Yes. <laughs> that's, hold, yes! On. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Yes! Hold on. <laughs> that's, the, that's the first time anyone's ever said Lethal Weapon. I Lethal win! Weapon. And she hasn't seen uh, the eye. <laughs> Phantom of the Opera or Les Miserables? Uh, Phantom. Yes. And Labyrinth or Labyrinth Ending Story? Labyrinth. I am so happy with the way that quiz ended. Yay! Yay! That's got half and half there for a little, yeah. yeah I, but I, I tried. No. I got a lethal <laughs> weapon vote. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, Adrian, yes. you are a patron of Bacon Cell. Thank you for that. I am. You're welcome. And uh, as part of that, you get to come and, and pick a topic and you get to come on the show and talk about it. It's it's one of the perks of being a patron of Bacon Cell. If you haven't checked it out, go to patreon.com slash Bacon Cell. Look at all the perks that come with each tier. I feel like you just pinned the blame on her just in case this show doesn't work. <laughs> How could it not work? Right. Because when we got the idea for this topic, Kent and I were like, oh, that sounds like a fun one. And then we realized. Like, how have we not done this before? Exactly. Honestly? And then we started looking up the subjects and also we realized this could spawn off a series of yeah. shows. Oh, I have open. I have created a monster. You yeah. have. So thank you. So Adrian, You're why welcome. don't you announce uh, if they haven't seen the title of the episode <laughs> or the picture or read the description, let them know what it's all about today. Now we are talking about TV theme show songs. Yes. Theme songs. Theme songs. TV show theme songs. Yes. TV you, show theme somewhere songs. Somewhere in there. The yeah, truth yeah. is in there. Yeah. 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 They know what you're talking about. Uh, I so, really do. I promise. <laughs> so this is a category show. So we have a series of categories and we're going to pick a winner from each category. We don't know what each other have picked for each category. Yeah. There might be some agreement. There might be some disagreement. But overall, you're just going to hear a lot of fun TV tunes. A lot of nostalgia. Uh, hopefully. So much. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of which, the first category is the one that makes you feel the most nostalgic. Adrian, you are a guest. Why don't you go first? Ooh, I get to go first. Okay. So this one... I kind of had a couple of ideas, went back and forth, but when I landed on this choice, I knew that that was this, like this was the one, and it was locked in. Okay, so my choice for this one is it is the theme from Full House. So oh, good, I can uh, hear. Them. I can feel the nostalgia you, watching over me. Can you see them like driving on the bridge in the car? Can sing it. Whatever, Whatever happened, happened to predictability? You know the lyrics? Uh, yeah, this this is one I love. But I mean, you don't know lyrics. I know. I only know the first part. I'm glad you didn't make me keep going. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I can see him driving in San Francisco. Yes. Everywhere you look, everywhere is a black place. A That's a heart. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, see? That's what I was I hoping I never know. For. Sure, sure. So, oh. Adrian, want to tell us a little more about why you picked this one? Oh, I just... This is one that I watched growing up, and I 
wanted to like be part of the Tanner family. Of course. And oh, we used to play this with Barbies with my sisters. We would make our own Full House episodes, and we would even do like back the you know the background music when it got to the sentimental you know yeah yeah sentimental yeah. moment that always happens with the music background. Which sister were you? Oh, I was DJ. I was the oldest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, me and my two little sisters. I'm not the oldest, but me and my two little sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the Kimmy Gibbler in your family? Oh, oh. Um, you don't have to answer that. Have have a, I don't think we have a Kimmy. Sure, you didn't have one. No. Yeah. Oh, that's a great choice, though. That's a good question. It really is like you You hear that, you see the opening credits in your head. Yes. And so this is, yes. this is a wash with nostalgia, too. And it's the beginning of TGIF. And so right. it makes you feel like, okay, I have possibly two hours of fun this Friday <laughs> because when I was young, that was my fun every yeah. Friday. Gonna have you fun? Yeah. Show us how it's done. TGIF. TGIF. Oh, that was nostalgic right there. Actually, the other day I turned on some Saturday morning cartoons for my kids. Mm-hmm. They don't do Saturday morning cartoons anymore. And so I found on YouTube someone who just recorded Saturday morning. With commercials and everything? With commercials and everything. Oh, what? nice. And it was the intros. Someone with a time machine? It, yeah. <laughs> it was the intros and outro. It was someone who just plugged a tape in the VCR and just recorded. It was the intros and outros like announcing CBS cartoons. That, yeah. all, that was like hit me with nostalgia. Like, the shows and commercials were so fine. Did you get like sit, boo-boo, sit, good dog, boo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. I got so all that. So good. All right, Ken, why don't you go next in, uh, next in the first of our 10 categories and wash us so with nostalgia. So the one that makes me feel nostalgic is kind of a cheat. Kind of a cheat? A cheat. What would you do if I sang oh. out of yep. So it makes Was me feel nostalgic. Era you never had. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that kind of weird? <laughs> but I don't even care. Uh, this one obviously is nostalgia for the, like, our parents at this time, but also this is one I watched all too often. Well, so let's see what it is first. It's, it's from The Wonder Years, which is a movie, a TV show from the 80s that was yes. set in the 60s. Yes. And this is with a, little, with a little help from my friend, sung by Joe Cocker, because it's a Beatles song. Yes. And yeah, this one started in 1988, went to 1993. This one is it's a story about young Kevin Arnold just going through school, living in this neighborhood. His dad is a, is a veteran. And life is just kind of like, hey, I want to win over Winnie Cooper. Winnie Cooper. Oh, Winnie. I want to hang out. I want to not get bullied. And it really was just like game changing. Is it a sitcom? Would you guys call it a sitcom or is it more more sitcom. dramatic elements? Well, there was a sitcom generally sense for situational comedy. Yeah. And so I don't know. It is a comedy, though, because there's funny stuff that happens. Yes. Like yeah. Like Paul being allergic to everything. <laughs> right. Who grew up to be Marilyn Manson. Manson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not true. Not true. And but this this one changed everything. Like it has a narrator on the show. There's no laugh yes. track. Mm-hmm. Which if you remember, like even Mash the, well, and the had nar- a, la- a laugh track. The narrator for Wonder Years is Daniel Stern. Yes. Who was Harry or Marv in Home Alone. Mm-hmm. Marv. Marv. He's Marv. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. He's okay. the narrator. So it's well, kind I of need to go back here. and watch and listen for that voice now. Yeah. Yeah, but like you look at Fred Savage now, who hasn't really aged at all. No. And he's still He's still Kevin Arnold. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, the funny thing about this, and this is something I've just recently really honed into, is that in the 80s, people were so nostalgic for the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And you look at movies and TV shows now, like Stranger Things, and it's the 80s. Strange. Like, we're nostalgic... Like our era of the 80s is was our parents era for the 60s. Like it's just that it's kind of weird how time just marches on and yeah. we keep getting nostalgic for this older time. But even then this this felt timeless. Even though like yeah. you're talking about like wars, like Vietnam War and mm-hmm. everything it's like and we never experienced that as kids. No. But we could somehow relate the to Cola these wars. kids that were just yeah. on the outside of that. And what they did in the show was kind of brilliant. They actually didn't name the location like where these people lived. It was kind of meant to be any town USA. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they never did anywhere throughout the series. And people would oh. always try to like look at license plates and everything like that. And they always left it a secret because they said, we want everyone to relate to these characters. Every town USA. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Great pick. I like that. I yeah. like Great that one. Good one. So I like good. The, something from my childhood, something from my parents' childhood. Indeed. <laughs> like, well, nice. not even from my parents' childhood, but it just feels like it. So, so Joel, Ken, what's you, yours? You picked a nostalgia for uh, an 80s show that was set in the 60s. Yes. I just went straight up 60s. Here we come. There we go. Walking down the street. Are we so, allowed to sing? Oh, yeah, you can sing. That's fine. The wrong lyrics? Sure. <laughs> you know the lyrics this one. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. So this is one where uh, the monkeys aired 1966 to 1968. That's it. Two seasons, 58 episodes, and it was done in 68. Yeah. Wow. But it got a revival in the 80s because MTV started airing reruns of the program, and it became this resurgence. Mm. Actually, fun fact. Uh, so uh, the, the monkeys, Mickey, Davy, Peter, Michael, uh, Michael, well the one with the wool hat, 
he was uh, one of the creators of MTV. What? Yeah. So he's one of the creators of it. And I think it's why the monkeys got on there. But this show, if you, if you don't know, the monkeys, if you don't know, the monkeys were a fictional band. They brought these people together and said, hey, we, we need funny people. We need actors. We need characters. And I think like Davy Jones was a former jockey. Uh, he was a stage actor at the time. Mickey was in some stuff, but like none of them were like musicians. Well, that's not true. Peter was a musician, but he wasn't yeah. like a band member. But they brought these guys together. They didn't play any of their own songs, but they sang them. Like that's actually Mickey on uh, singing on there, but then they turned him into kind of this Beatles esque. I mean, they're cool kind of band. hacks, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, but they then learned how to play instruments and tried to play their own songs. But and tried, <sighs> yeah, tried. It wasn't as good. And and they, like I said, they only have two seasons. And there's actually a big backlash when people found out that they Millie Vanillied them before Millie Vanilli was a thing. <laughs> uh, except for they they were doing it with their instruments because they actually yeah. did sing. But this is one where I used to watch the monkeys all the time and I had albums and I knew all the, I knew all their names. I remember they came to Lagoon one time and I was so yeah. excited. I didn't get a go. But oh, so wow. why did you like this show? I like this in the 80s. Like this. Yeah. Oh, why, why or when? Why? Oh, it was so goofy. Like the whole thing is like this band. They get up in these weird situations. Like one time they're in like a haunted house that I remember. And they, they Davey was always falling in love with all these girls. Right. And that was hilarious. And Peter, did you have a favorite? Of all of them? Yeah. Michael, actually. Mike, oh, Mike really? was my favorite. I don't know why. The quiet kind of... I, I don't know. Not Mickey. Well, no. The <laughs> Mickey was kind of a little too goofy for me, I guess. Sure. But uh, like Michael Naismith, Mike, the this, this smart and serious one. That For some reason, I gravitated towards him more than others. You know what's kind of sad is I feel like this was my first entry point into the Beatles. <laughs> like, oh, I yeah? think I knew the monkeys before I ever knew the <laughs> Beatles. That line in Dumb and Dumber where he says, it, like, ooh, the, uh, the monkeys, they were a big influence on the Beatles. Oh, really? Yeah, it's kind yeah, of Yeah, so I, I feel oh, like shit. I saw the show, and then when I actually got a little more cultured and listened to the Beatles, I was like... Oh, yeah. The monkeys, they're pretty trashy. But <laughs> They're not trashy, though. Like, I still like their songs. I still have such nostalgia for their songs. And this one in particular, I can, I can feel the opening credits in my mm-hmm. head, just like mm-hmm. the way it works. Them jumping around on the beach and rolling a bed around on the street and things like that. Like, all these goofy situations. Yes. Yeah. Because it was just them having fun. And that's really all the show was. Exactly. <laughs> so the next category is the theme that tells the story in the best way. The one that gives the exposition. Because this used to be a thing. Yes. It used to be that when TV shows started, they would have to tell you the story in a succinct manner to let everyone know what was going on. In about 30 seconds. Because you couldn't go look up past episodes. Mm -hmm. They were gone. Yeah. So this is the one that did the best I'm going to go first on this one. My choice is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But what's the show about? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's actually about... Heroes in a half shell. Oh. Turtle power. Oh, okay. So every lyric in this thing is trying to explain who these characters are. I gotta I gotta turn this down because it is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a great song, obviously, from my childhood. And this show went from uh, 1987 to 1996. There's 193 episodes. Wow. Could I have chosen better songs for this? Yeah. But I went for the one that I knew. The one that told me who each of these turtles were, were, what their moods are, their moods and attitudes, and who the villain is and everything like that. I mean, Michelangelo is a party dude. There you go. That's all you need to know about him. And Raphael, he's cool. But rude. Yeah. Pretty pretty rude. rude. Yeah. (laughs) By the way, did you guys have a favorite turtle? I was a Michelangelo guy. You were? Yeah, which is weird because I like the smart and serious one of the monkeys, but I like the party dude for Ninja Turtles. Same era. I never really got into the turtle, but I'm probably Michelangelo. Okay. See, I was done solo. You did machines? <laughs> and I was not I was not smart. <laughs> Maybe a little nerdy. If I had to rank them, it would probably be Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, Raphael. Raphael last? But there's four turtles. That's controversial. <laughs> Let's save it for our Ninja Turtle <laughs> show. Raphael last for real? Save it for our Ninja Turtle show. And now we need to have one. The theme song was actually recorded. The one who spoke those parts was Chuck Lorre, who now has produced Big Bang Theory, Two and a Half Men, mm-hmm. most of the CBS lineup. Like he's a multimillionaire. And he was the one that, that sang those parts. Every spoken part was well, sang by him. And yeah, they really? really do. Like, you think about that song, and it really is like they're explaining the show. Yes. So clearly. Right. But, like, so ridiculously, too. Because it's like, here's in a half shell. Okay, we get it. But what does that mean? Splinter taught them to be ninja teens. <laughs> He's a <laughs> radical rat. He's a radical rat. So I found this Twitter bot. And it wiki underscore TMNT. And it finds things on Reddit that can fit the song of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And if I, if you guys will, you know, implore me, I would like to sing some of these to you. Please. Oh, yes. Let's hear. They're pretty bad. Are you ready? I'm ready. 
List of tuber fungus species. List of what? what? Tuber, tuber. Okay, you ready? Okay. Shifting burden of persuasion. These are all <laughs> these are all Wikipedia <laughs> entries. And so, so this bot will take these Wikipedia entries and make it a song like So it's just it's just four two syllable <laughs> words. Study of the Hebrew language. <laughs> Study of the Hebrew language. <laughs> Nova Scotia light and power. So it gives oh two more. Gypsy beats and Balkan dancers. <laughs> Gypsy beats and <laughs> Balkan dancers. And List of people from Montana. <laughs> <laughs> list of list people. Of people. So there. This Who created just this web page. The list of no. The so go follow this. It's wiki underscore tmnt. Every fifteen minutes, it grabs something new from Wikipedia, a new page title, and what? we'll put it <laughs> in this format. That's I'm so, so sorry. Random. That's so random. That yes, and someone has a lot of time on their hands. Yes, Indeed. So Joel, what do you got? All right. So. When it comes to uh, telling the story in the best way, I don't think any show compares to this one. <laughs> Stop. This is a joke. What? This is a joke. I'm so lost. Wait. Yes. Oh. That's lost. lost. Of course. What? Are, wait, is this a Joel joke? No, that is a Joel joke. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> like, that's a, that's like, you didn't get the entire story <laughs> about the island and the cork and everything and purgatory. Oh, and all I that. get it. Finally. There probably yeah. are like it's subliminal right voices there. in there somewhere. Oh, there Finally. totally are. No, of course. It has to be this one. Here's the story of a lovely lady. Who was bringing up three very lovely girls? This, of course, is the Brady Brood. The yes. Brady Brood. Yes. It was originally called the Brady Brood, actually. Wait, but it says three lovely girls because I'm pretty sure Jan is in that family. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> shame Jan. Sure. A little bit. Aww. This is, of course, the Brady Bunch theme song. It was originally called uh, the Brady Brood when they shot the pilot, and they decided brood was maybe not the right word to use. Yeah. Bunch is a little more friendly. It feels macabre. The original song was actually arranged, sung, and performed by the Peppermint Trolley Company. Uh, a- Do they have any other hits? Not really. Okay. Well, they were a, gr- they were a singing group. But uh, they then the Brady kids took over in season two, and I think Cousin Oliver probably took over near oh. the end. <laughs> Cousin, Cousin he's Oliver. The worst. Do you know what I found out while doing my research? This was never a big hit during its original run. Like, when the series originally ran, it wasn't that big. But this aired from 1969 to 1974. But it was in the late 70s and early 80s when it went to syndication that it became the powerhouse that it was. Don't you guys feel lucky that we that in the 80s they had so many of these shows in syndication? Like Nick at Night. Yes. It was amazing to be able to see some of these. Oh, old for ones. sure. Yeah. We, like the golden age. All right. I have, a, I have a pop quiz for you, too. Okay. Oh. Kent, name all the girls. Go. Jan, Marsha, Cindy. All the girls. Oh, and the mom. Florence Henderson. Her, her <laughs> character's name? Nope. What? What's the mom's name? And the maid? Oh, why is it slip my mind? I know. <laughs> What's her name? Alice. Alice. And Carol. Alice Carol. And Carol. And Carol Brady. Name all the boys. Okay, we got Greg, Peter, Bobby, mm-hmm. Mike. Very good. And Alice's uh, fiance slash husband. Oh, the, the, the butcher. He was yep. a, uh, S- Sam. Sam. Very oh. good. Nicely done. So this is Woo. one of those shows that I feel like everyone knew back in the day. Yeah. But my kids don't know this. They never watch this. And I'm like, I need to show them this. I showed my girls a few episodes and they enjoyed it. Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. My nieces love you still love the Brady Bunch. This is one of those that I feel like more people should know. But the Brady Bunch theme song, I feel, obviously tells a story of uh, a lovely lady lady. and a man named Brady. Does it talk about a radical rat? (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. But they were, you know, four men living all together, but they were all alone. (laughs) But yeah, I think it's just a great way to kind of explain the story. So there you go. There's Brady Bunch. That's my pick for Tells the Story. Adrian, your turn. Okay. So my choice, we're going to have some agreement because it is it's the Brady Bunch. Here's the story. It's Once the again. It's the Brady Bunch <laughs> again. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I had the same, I did some research and had the same facts that you did about the Peppermint Trio yeah. for the first season. I actually went and listened to it. Did you listen to it? The original one? Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's funny because it still sounded somewhat familiar to me. Yes. But not as familiar as the kids. The original right. uh, theme song for season one. It is funny how sometimes the theme song changes for some of these shows. Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. I have one oh, good. that has like dozens. Yes. That's what it feels like at least. Ooh. So yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Like really, okay. So I have to admit that th- I knew someone else was going to pick this one because this is like the iconic yes. uh, theme is. song yeah. of like telling the story. This one in Gilligan's Island, probably. That was. I have that as an honorable mention for Dang, this one. I should have gone with that one. And Ninja Turtles, yeah. guys. Yep, sure. 
Okay, so next category we have is Can't Get It Out of Your Head. By Kylie Minogue. I can't get you <laughs> out of my head. Boy, your love is all I'm thinking about. Is it weird that that song has been in my head as I've been researching that this really? week? Nah, it kind of nah, has nah, whenever nah, I was thinking nah, of that category. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> we have a new closing track, no, everyone. I, I will say that this one, <laughs> when I did the research for this song, because I wanted one that was real earworm that would not leave my head. And so I listened to a ton of different TV theme show theme, See, you TV show theme songs. Oh. Yes, there you go. And this one definitely stuck out to me. I, I should also clarify that I used to have CDs of, and I still do have some. I still have like these CDs on my iTunes, but of uh, TV show theme songs, like four different. You were CDs, that kid, huh? And I knew them all, even if I haven't watched the show. But this one, I watched the show. I enjoy the show, and this song did not leave my head the entire time I was doing research. So this is the Adams Family theme, and we listen to this one a lot around Halloween time. But it is a, it this does not leave my head. Like since Halloween, this has been in my head. That dun dun dun. dun. Yeah, it's just catchy. So the Adams Family originally aired from 1964 to 1966, two seasons, 64 episodes. This song is originally uh, composed by Vic Mizzy, who it was apparently a big composer back in the day. He did Green Acres, so okay. another popular one. Makes sense. Okay. And this this also kind of tells the story. I almost chose it for that one because it says they're mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky. Makes sense. I don't, <laughs> they're this, ooky. This is the 60s when you could be like, we're going to do a random rhyme here. Dr. Seuss type of thing. It doesn't really make any <laughs> sense. But uh, a harpsichord and finger snaps. That's all you really need for, to make an, uh, an iconic theme. And I remember the, I don't know if you guys remember this, but the ending theme was just an instrumental version of that. And it featured like a triangle, a wooden block, a whistle. And there was a duck call at the end, but to me, it always sounded like Pug- Pugsley going, hoo, hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it have to be Pugsley? I don't know, because he was the only small kid voice that I could put, like, figure out who it was. And so if you listen to the instrumental, the ending track, you'll hear, hoo, hoo. I can imagine Pugsley <laughs> doing it. Also, I want to give a shout out to MC Hammer for Adam's Groove. They do what they want to do, see what they want to say, live how they want to live, play how they want to play. Wow. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. It's never been referenced on this show. That's a first. I think it has, that actually. That song? I'm pretty sure I've referenced it. <laughs> Was that from the first or second Adam's Family? Uh, second, I believe. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, right. Adam's Family values was on that one. Adrian, what about you for the theme that you can't get out of your head? Okay, so the theme that I can't get out of my head is also kind of a nostalgic one, but it is... This one gets stuck in your head. It does. When I hear it, I can't get that first, like that first line, especially. It just stays in my head, and I know it takes. It, it is nostalgic, but it just, I just, I can't, I can't get it out of my head. It's it. funny how this one. I also hear the Warner Brothers yeah. theme yes. right in front of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's funny too that this one they changed the ending. Uh, like almost not every episode, but fairly regularly, they change the ending. Like Anna Maney, totally insaney, Pinky and the Brainy, come back, Shaney. The, the one I remember yes. is Citizen Katie, yep. list of Nova Scotia. No, nope, that's not. That's not it. People in Montana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a great choice. It is funny how uh, '90s this one is. Yes. Like it's like well, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton plays the sax, and it's like, wow, that, do people even know that reference anymore? And this is this was a great cartoon. Oh, I loved it. I loved yeah. it. But yeah, it does get stuck in my head. It's I think I think a lot of it is because that last next. line that I was and always waiting for. What's it going to be this totally time? Totally insaney. Mm-hmm. What's it going to say? Frasier Craney. Ah, is <laughs> Frasier Craney one? one? Please I tell me. You. That was one. Any other was that? Any other ones? Pinky and the Brainy. They oh, did man. that one. Like Frasier yeah. Craney. That is so 90s as well. Right. That's right. hilarious. Varicose Veiny. <laughs> May have been. <laughs> what? It didn't make sense. Uh, this probably wasn't on a kid's show. <laughs> <laughs> Drops of Jupiter by Trainee. <laughs> no? I didn't do that one? Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, no, we don't need to do more. <laughs> we can move on. Can't, why don't you get for the one that's stuck in your head? And then we'll see at the end who wins the earworm competition. The one that gets stuck in my head, the one that I probably think of at least once a week is... Yeah. Like Ducktales. Here in Duckburg. It, it's a duck blur, you guys. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what does it mean to have a duck blur? <laughs> you don't want to know. It, it's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of like when you smell burnt toast. <laughs> so you have a stroke? I'm having a duck blur. Oh, okay. Okay. The, stroke, okay. the stroke is now a duck blur. I can see this one. Just that, that beat. Yeah. And you can see the wave of money cresting. Yes. Yep. 
Didn't you always just want to swim through the money too? Until you realize you die. Yeah. I, I actually had, didn't a, think that as I had a, a big huge jar full of pennies, and I remember I tried to just put my hand in it, and it was like, boom. <laughs> It's not money's not very good for swimming. It's not. No. Did you guys ever get stressed out when he would lose his money? Like when there would be like one right coin. over the fault line. Yeah, there would be one coin. Like I used to be like, how's he going to get it back in that vault? That really tall building. <laughs> <laughs> also, what was he gonna do? if it, if he could swim in it, couldn't he sink to the bottom and possibly die? Very possibly, but he was really good at it. <laughs> really good. So so good that he was spitting money out like it was water. Yes, he did that as <laughs> well. In his swimsuit. Just in his swimsuit. Because he needed that as a duck. Yeah. So uh, Mark Mueller wrote this song, and he sold it to Disney for $1,250. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, yeah, we like it. But he still does make royalties, so he's doing okay. He does make royalties? <clears throat> yeah, he does. Oh, okay. And then it was sung by a guy named Jeff Pachetto. He sang for Darkwing Duck and Chip and Dale. When there's trouble, you call <clears throat> DW. So he actually didn't like that he was known for that. Like he felt typecast and he didn't like he's like known for the DuckTales. Yeah, he's like they're cartoon songs like that's all the cartoons. That's not me. I'm a I'm a serious musician. But now that he has a kid, it's said that he likes these these songs and his fame with them very much. So he's kind of changed his mind a little bit. But this song, everything about it, it, and there's an extended one, which kind of loses a lot of steam. Have you guys heard the extended song? Yeah. Yeah, it goes, it goes a little bit too long. It, well, a lot of these theme songs, you hear the, the one minute version of it and you're like, that's a cool song. And then you listen to the full version. You're like, this doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah it doesn't I, sound right. When I was looking at every one, it was like a minute and a half, a minute and 40 seconds. Were we really? Did we really wait that long? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> were the, did they have the extended ones on your CD that you had? Or was um, it just like 30 second clips? Most of them were just the TV theme song, like the, the 30 second, one minute kind of versions. Yeah. But yeah. Well, let's ask Jake, which one uh, gets stuck in your head the most? He's not here. Wah, wah. So let's go to the next category. Adrian, it's your turn to start. Best right. instrumental theme. Ooh, best instrumental. This was a really hard one because there's a lot of good there's ones. There's so many good ones. A lot of so good ones. So many good ones. But there's one that is the best one, and it's this one. Oh, man. I just feel Game epic. of Thrones, right? Just from the second. I feel like I just want right to stab someone in the eyes and smash their head. Take it easy. <laughs> I, it makes me never want to get married, that's for sure. Right? Yeah. No weddings ever. Never or a tent. <laughs> yeah. A wedding, so, maybe. So I got to know, um, this intro is it's very long. This might be yes. one of the longest theme songs. It's one of the few that I actually uh, you know, had to trim down to play. Mm. Oh, you did? Yeah. Do you guys watch the entire intro every yes. time? Yes, I did. Every time. Every time. Because yep. the credits would change, Ken. Yes. Yeah, they, they did. But a lot of people may not notice because they may skip the intro. Don't for skip the like intro. This. It'll show no. all of a sudden like this is like a minute burn to the ground. It's a minute and a half. But right. it tells you. But it tells, this is one where I think it tells you the story without any words. Because you get to see the map of the land. Mm-hmm. You get to see all the different lands that are and that the everything's new ones, happening. Right. Yeah, things that are popping up and where the story is taking place. Where it's in relation to everything else, I think it's a fantastic opening credit sequence. It is. I and love it. the instrumental stuff is just ah, what, amazing. What I love about this instrumental is just the way that it like changes from minor to a major key M- well, music all terms. the time. Music, music. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it does. And also and the just, composer, he went for the ch- like strong cello sound in this one. Yes. Because he felt like all the other like instruments, like flutes and everything like that, they were so overused in fantasy that he wanted this one to feel grounded. And it right. feels so epic. Like yes. it, it kicks in and you just want to just like battle or, you know, you're getting into something really cool. Yeah. It also took every fiber of my being not to sing to that song. What do you sing? Short version. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh. sing it, but like when I, I started watching the show when I had uh, my fourth child and <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> yes. You're right. And a uh, long time ago, many kids ago. But uh, I had my fourth child, and I remember I started watching around then, and I was like trying to sing to him to get him to go to sleep as I was watching this, because I was trying to get him to go to bed, and I'd sing his name kind of in rhythm with the song, and so his name is forever associated with. <laughs> but was it Thrones. softer? It was like sleepy. You were sleepy. You were really, really sleepy. <laughs> Last name in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're getting it. Yeah, but no, I, I think that's a fantastic pick, and there are so many good instrumental ones. It, yes. Adrian, you you don't know the amount of mental anguish you've given Kent and I. Because this was one of those lists where I'm like, I want to choose this one, and I, I can't because it doesn't fit in, but it needs to be brought up, so I'm so right. glad you brought up this in one. In fact, I knew Game of Thrones would be chosen, which is why I didn't choose it. Of course. Because it is the best instrumental choice. Thank you. So I went with the second best. Okay. Yes! And we just lost our audience. <clears throat> no, I'm Joel's it. rocking that right yes. now. Oh, Adrian got on. Maybe. Here we Wait. go. Hold on. Wait until the, until the noise comes in here in a second. Ready? Here we go. 
I don't know it. What? Think low budget British sci fi. Oh. It's Doctor Who. Yeah. Okay. They have a budget. Did they? <laughs> well, not, not in that era, they did. They that, kind of did. That's David Tennant. Not, yeah. that, not that I know the different theme songs. The re- say there's several different versions. Yes, right? there are. The reason I chose this, so this is a show been going like 56 years now. Yeah. And so this song was there from the beginning. This was written in 1963 by Australian composer Ron Grainer and British composer Delia Derbyshire, which is a very British name. <laughs> And actually, <laughs> I'm dealing with Dilly 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 Dilly. <laughs> But apparently, she was like the first British DJ. Like, she composed all the electronic DJ sounds. DJ Dillian Jibbishai <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Triple D. Oh, man. <laughs> Dibbishai. Dibbishai. <laughs> mm, yes. No, but it's funny because, like, much like the doctor, Kent, this song has reinvented itself yes. multiple times. Some are better than others. Like, the first one's really kind of, you know, low budget sci but, sci-fi. But it, it gets it. Yeah, I, I feel like it captures the show because it's like haunting, ethereal, adventurous, foreboding even. And you're right. It evolves throughout the show. Yeah. Whereas, you know, first it was like really kind of basic instruments and now it is orchestral. Yeah, but it, it always kind of maintain. It, the thing is, it maintains that theme that. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, I was going to say it's a very recognizable theme. Adrian, I think you proved me wrong on that one. But even if you haven't so seen sorry. the show, you, you hear these notes and you're like. Oh, it's that one really cheesy British show that was on PBS back in the so day. My, my kids haven't really watched this show. Yeah. But they know this theme song because when it comes on, like I'll, I'll put Shuffle on my, on my uh, playlist. Mm-hmm. And if this song comes up, the car turns into a TARDIS, which means we shake the wheel a lot. <laughs> and like the kids start wiggling around because it's... And it's TARDIS. bigger on the inside. It sure. is. Oh, yeah. okay. The best thing is like they know this is the TARDIS song. And so like the, uh, that'll start driving crazy when this song comes on. <laughs> nice. But no, that's a great choice, Kent. Good second choice. So I, I <laughs> Wait, did you just give me a pity? Good second choice. No, you you said it was the second choice. I was okay. Well, both, sure. both of you picked pretty darn good ones that I approve of both, but I think you're both going to agree that mine is the best. And once again, I feel like I'm showing my age, but it's not. I'm not because I, I wasn't born in the '60s. But it's a '60s song from a '60s TV series, and it's this one. Ah. Uh. So uh, this is Mission Impossible from the Mission Impossible TV series, which ran from 1966 to 1973, composed by Lalo Schifrin. I'd like to read some of the lyrics here. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, oh, it's about dun. Me. Okay, Aww. yeah, yeah. I'm Funny, it. This is actually uh, music. I learned this. This was written five a uh, five four time signature. It's very tricky. Yeah, it's a and time. apparently it. It spawned from uh, Schifrin, starting with the Morse code for MI, Mission Impossible, which is what? dash, dash, dot, dot, oh. dash, dash, dot, Whoa. dot. I just learned something today. That's so pretty genius. Dash, dash is M, dot, dot is I, and so he did that as kind of like, that was what he was going for. Oh, that's cool. Now, that's this one, brilliant. The, the original right. single actually peaked at number 41 on the Billboard Hot 100, and then Leonard Nimoy actually covered a version of this on his album as well. What? Have you it. heard his stuff? No. He, he, he sang a song for Bilbo Baggins? Yes. It is ridiculous. We'll this, watch it right after this. This was instrumental, wow. though. Like, it, he stayed instrumental this, but it still maintained it. I actually did a, a drugs, dance a lot of uh, in, in high school to the Adam Clayton and Larry Mullen Jr. version, with the 1997 Mission yeah. Impossible version. Yes. I did a dance to this one with like uh, an assembly. It was a whole thing we did to this song. So it has a special place in my heart. But not to Limp Biscuits version? <laughs> uh, I had no way you want to hate me. <laughs> Mike, check. <laughs> What's it all about? Oh, where you got to run? Life is a lesson. You learn it when you're through. I like how we're, we're flashing our hands <laughs> like the edge off a knife. No, sir. I was feeling a little scared being in the middle of this for yeah. a second. <laughs> this actually Pretty, uh, it was going down. crossfire of Limp Biscuit. Down. The uh, Adam Clayton and Larry Mullen Jr. version, U2, basically. That's no, a well, good band yeah. name. Uh, what, Limp Biscuit Crossfire? <laughs> I think I might get sued for that. <laughs> but uh, we had the actually, lesser known guys this from pe- you too. Yeah, they, they <laughs> peaked at number seven in 1997. So it peaked twice on the Billboard Hot 100. And it was actually nominated for a Grammy Award, but lost to uh, The Sinister Minister by Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones. Oh, okay. So thank you for not huh. that. Also, fun fact about Mission Impossible, which if you don't know, if you don't, I feel like I, I should explain some of these shows. I don't know why, but. You know, if you don't know, Mission Impossible is about people. Well, if you've seen the movies, yeah, a bunch of spies getting well, together. Well, it's actually kind of different from the movies. But what I mean is, it's a group of people getting together to do an Phelps impossible leader. Mission. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, the word "self destruct," by the way, was apparently coined by the show's writers. What? Really? I know. Not Russians. Apparently not. <laughs> not Russians. But there, you go, that's my pick. Mission Impossible. What works so well about that one is even now in these modern movies, which now we have six. Yes, it is still a timeless theme. Like right. it's not a dated. 
my 60, favorite 70s theme. part of the movies is when the theme will come in. Yeah. Like when it appears, you're like, yeah. and, it's, and it's not even hokey at all. No. Like you feel intensity. Yeah. And they, well, and they always still do it in the same way. Like, you know, something's being ignited yeah. and all that. Dun, like it's dun, dun, dun. Also, this I think is the song everyone kind of hums to themselves when they're doing something secretive. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. All right. Uh, someone's going to have an issue. The next category We're is. We're going to make some people angry here. The best theme song for the worst show. Once best again. Best theme song. This is a subjective worst show. Worst show. There are hundreds of, of show, thousands of shows oh. to choose from. There are, but the thing is, there's so there's only so many that are just bad shows, but they have a good theme song. And so I'm I'm going to go first on this one. I'm going to upset some people on this show. Here we come. Oh my gosh! Oh. Why do you got to do this to me, Kent? I'm so sorry. We're not talking about we're not talking about the movie Head because that was really bad. And Head the is show really, was so funny. Head, Head has tainted the experience for me. That was a weird because movie. it made me realize that nothing was happening in this show. Did I watch it all the time when I was a kid? Yeah. Do I remember a single thing that happened? No. Worst <laughs> show, Kent. Look. I'm obviously just being a bully. Because I thought you were going to make Adrian mad. I was worried for a second. I thought I was something else was coming down. No, you're a guest. I'm going to treat you well. Oh, well, thank you. Joel, on the you. other hand, hey, not Joel. dare you. Here, here's what the show did. It was loosely scripted, yeah. this show, and it was often too short by a few minutes. So they'd record stuff, and they'd be like, we have like three minutes of air time. They basically invented the music video with that show. Yeah. Kind. So they invented, or they'd like take interviews that the cast did, yeah. and they'd throw them in, in the episode somewhere. Extra features. Just, just to fill time. These are DVD special features. It was the 60s. They were high. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. It's okay. Also, uh, so they didn't, uh, they had a laugh track in season one, but not season two. So they, they switched things up. It wasn't as funny. It, season two. <laughs> yeah. NBC <laughs> actually said that having no laugh track in season two was one reason it waned in popularity and it was eventually canceled. Hmm. And, they, and the band said if we were picked up for a third season, they wanted to do a variety show or a sketch show. They were trying new things. Yeah, they were trying a lot of things. <laughs> <Yeah>. Drugs. <laughs> Did you hear about what happened to the members that weren't on the camera? No. So apparently to reduce noise on the set when they were filming, mm-hmm. they would take the monkeys that any of the four monkeys that weren't on the camera at the time, they would put them, they would lock them in a converted meat locker. What? <laughs> they had a Wait, meat huh? locker. They converted to like a green room, but they could lock them in there so they wouldn't cause a ruckus. Wow. I know. Oh my gosh. Was was it, 60s were crazy. Was it like man. a freezer? No, it was a converted meat locker. Okay. Yeah. It still seems wrong. Still very. Yeah. Oh, oh. there's hot box weed. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Family Maybe? friendly. Family friendly, Kent. Well, we can allude look, to it. <laughs> I, I do look at the show fondly, but man, that was silly. That was beyond I silly. I really like it. I really liked it. I, I yeah. have to admit, I'm kind of afraid to watch it now. Right. I don't know if I'd have the patience for it. We'll have to see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Save for the biggest little sleepover. So, <laughs> <laughs> but not in the meat locker. Right. right? Not in the no meat locker. Meat locker. Okay. <laughs> Uh, mine, I don't know. I don't know if this is the worst show, but I'll tell you what, I definitely didn't enjoy watching it near the end. You got it, Kent? Yeah. Do you want me to say it? No, I'll do it here in a second when, the, when it kicks in. So this is from Mad Men, which aired from 2007 to 2015, seven seasons, 92 episodes, one third of which are good. So when I first started <laughs> You're watching, giving them one third, yeah. Because when I first started watching this, this was an amazing study in character, like character study. Yes, you watch these characters. Right. The story didn't matter; it was about the characters. Mm-hmm. And this opening yeah. sequence of the ad man falling from a skyscraper, and like it just showed Don Draper's kind of descent into his life was basically crumbling apart because people were starting to realize he may not be who he says he is. Dun dun. <gasps> Spoiler. Uh, this was actually composed by R J D two. Oh, yeah, that's oh. the thing. That's His name is actually Jane. Ramble John My name Cron. is actually Delia Derbyshire. <laughs> but he goes by the stage name RJD2. And this, I felt like this really kind of captured the essence of the show. It's kind of got that slick feel to it, but yeah. also the, the bongos, very 60s, which is funny because this is from like a 2000s uh, hip hop record. But it was sampling a World War II string piece that was actually a French rendition. Like, there's so many th- pieces Whoa, going in here, yeah. basically, was coming in here. But. This is a, and it's it's set in the 1960s. Yeah, oh, man, man, I'm really leaning towards the 60s. You huh? really are. But this is a 2000 show. I just this is a hate yeah. watch show for me. I watched right. every episode, every episode until the last season. For some reason, I never finished. You never yeah. did. I don't know why. I I never enjoyed it, but I kept watching. I kept watching for the yeah. longest time, and then I went. I'm miserable every time I watch the show, and I hate all the characters, and everyone lies, and everyone's miserable. This is a miserable show. I stopped watching, but I kept reading the episode summaries when they'd come on mm. the air. 
Okay. So I, do you, I, I you wish you kept watching? No, I'm very happy I didn't. Yeah. Because by the end, I was like, I don't even care about anyone on the show anymore. I'd rather watch The Monkeys than Mad Men, to be honest. Yay! <laughs> yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. By the way, uh, RJD2 received a one lump sum for the song as well, because this was on his album. It's actually, the song's not great, and it's, once again, when it's the extended version, the yeah. full version, it's not great. But that little sample, very cool, very classy for a meh show. Yeah, totally. Mad meh. Mad meh. Mad, mad meh. <laughs> Okay, I had a really hard time with this one too. Um, and I actually, I, what I ended up choosing, it's a show that I didn't really watch because just seeing, but I was aware of it and was, so I didn't really want to watch. Um, and it's the Love Boat theme. This one. So, love confession. Boat. Confession. I love singing this one. Right? It's such a fun song. Love. Exciting and new. Why are we Robert Goulet? Come on, boy. <laughs> We're expecting you. Yeah. Yeah. I actually hate this. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's aggressively annoying. But it's wow. life's sweetest reward is love, Kent. It is. I have a lot to learn. Who doesn't want to, like, be on a cruise ship and enjoy Wait, wait, wait that? here comes. Oh, oh. The Love Boat. I never watched the show, to be honest. Wait, was never, that 22 minutes? Is the episode over already? <laughs> yeah. This one is it's extremely long. I went and found it on YouTube to watch it. It's really long, like a minute yeah. 45. Wow. Uh, really long. Confession. When you guys know, in high school, they give superlatives at the end, like, you know, best hair, mm-hmm. cutest smile, whatever. I got, I'm not joking, the next captain of the Love Boat. <laughs> what? What? And I, I've, I still have the little boat they gave me. Wait, is that because you're so popular you dated a lot? I don't know what it means. Like they said, the next Captain Love Boat is yeah. Joe Hilton. And I'm like, Captain? What? I don't know. Okay, that thank you. That doesn't mean anything, right? Take whatever you want to take from that meeting of me in high school. Take it. But apparently I was really good at setting people up. I don't know. What? Oh, there you go. But I, Actually, I yes, it. thank you. You have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a Aww. minute. Aww. Yeah. Actually, I'm mad at you now. You should be. <laughs> But yeah, that's actually a good choice because I I, I know the song. I sing right. the song. I mock the song. Indeed. I never watched the show. Yeah, I never did either. And I just, even just watching the the title sequence of it, mm-hmm. uh, this is You've like- You've seen enough. Enough. And I don't need to see more. I'll just enjoy it all the had, song. It like, had like a steering wheel with like their faces appearing. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm uh. here. You know if they did- And there's like 20 of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if they did a reboot of this, it'd be like a reality show. True. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Ew. Gross. Yeah, you. So there you go. You the may take book. the cake on this one because that that, oh, may, that, really? may, that may be biggest from fun song. Well, I haven't to seen show. it and to know I hate it. Right. Yeah. I guess. I haven't but. either. But and I was I was worried about that one. It's basically Mad Men at Sea. That's Mad, what I'm going to say. Mad Men at Sea. Yeah. Mad Men was on was one of my. I almost went with Mad Men. Oh, good. I'm glad you didn't. Can uh, we just say that's universally hated? Mad Men. Yeah. The show yeah. or the song? The show. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. I'm Bacon Cell. Indeed. Bacon Cell approved. Bacon Cell approved. Bacon Cell approved. Boop. Finger boop. Yay! Finger poop. All right. Every listener deserves a finger poop. Thank, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so this All next right. category is the one everybody knows, which is kind of it's kind of a dangerous category because here's the thing: if we give one that we think everybody knows and you two don't know it, <laughs> that's a problem. But the like you know Kent with the with Doctor Who, but I chose this one, and I know you both know it because we've already talked about it. So here we have DuckTales again. I smell and toast. <laughs> you smell toast again. That's a duck blur. Now, Kent, there's some facts here that I was like, you didn't bring it up, and I was hoping you would, and you didn't. Okay. So, for example, the guy, Mark Mueller, who wrote this song, mm-hmm. who composed this song, he also co-wrote Jennifer Page's 1998 hit, Crush. <gasps> which I thought for sure Just you were going to bring. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Little crush. That's what I was worried about. <laughs> Ah. The whole thing, like, no, stop it. It's like I just drank a Sprite. The whole thing took me about 45, <laughs> stop it. It took him 45 <laughs> minutes to write. And apparently this is translated in different languages, but they don't do, uh, woo in all other languages. In uh, Finnish, it's O-O. In Norwegian, for Norwegians, it's A-A-Ha. And in Pol- the Polish offer a frisky, you ooh. What about Nova Scotia? Uh, they say, Nova Scotia. Uh, Nova Scotia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this was, like, even they did the reboot, they did the new version of this song. Yeah. and the, the new version of the show, excuse me. And they just kind of revamped this song. And I think that's good to do because everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. Like I said, I've, I think I brought this up on the show before. 
at Divine Comedy, we used to play, we play music in between sketches. Like, we'll do a, a comedy sketch, yeah. lights go out, music plays, people wave their glow sticks in the air, and lights come back up. And our favorite thing to do is play DuckTales and cut it off before the woo-hoo. So oh, that, that's rude. So it's like DuckTales, and we, we'd lights would come on, music you go tease. off. And everyone in the audience would go, woo Oh, oh, we just got me again. But we love doing it because everyone knew it. Everyone loved it. Unless they were from the Ukraine. They're like, wahoo. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. By the way, I want to bring this up. DuckTales, Huey, Dewey, and Louie are staying with their Uncle Scrooge. Yeah. Where the heck was Donald? Uh, He's absentee. Wait, Donald was an uncle as well. He wasn't the dad. I know, but apparently he lived with the boy, or the boys lived with him. And I found this out. I looked it up because I was curious. When Uncle Donald decided to join the new S- to join the U.S. Navy, he enlisted Uncle Scrooge to watch after his nephews. So basically, he enlisted and left these kids to someone else. They're oh. being shuffled around wow. with a rich guy. Yeah. Anyway, Ducktales. Woo <laughs> again. Okay. Adrian's about to prove you wrong. By the way, the one everybody knows. So I. That's a lot of pressure. It is. Some you pressure. ready? It okay. is some pressure, but I'm ready because I'm just going to say the first line. Now this is a story. Mm, I think I know it. All about, about Brady, how who is bringing go. up three very lovely girls. <laughs> it is the Fresh Prince. Now this is a story, story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, down and I'd like, like to, to commit it just sit right, right there. Yeah. Our timing is awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we got good. rhythm. We have so much rhythm, but this is the only, I guess, hip hop song that I can actually I know all the words to. And actually, the composer, he said, I don't know if it's measurable, but there's probably not another hip-hop song that more people can know all the words yeah. to. And you said on yours it was written in, what, 45 minutes? Yeah, yeah. This one was written in 15 minutes, actually. Will Smith did this in 15 minutes? With DJ Jazzy Jeff, yes. Yeah. Yes, they the did. Fresh Prince. Yeah, the music was actually written by Quincy Jones. Oh, yes. Yeah, the there's, there's a longer right, version yeah. of this as well. But yeah, then yeah, there they, is. Will Smith wrote the lyrics. And Jazzy Jeff, as always, tries taking some credit for Will Smith's work. Oh, <laughs> poor Jazzy Jeff. Um, the, the single was actually originally uh, released in the Netherlands in 1992 and has spent 10 weeks in the top 40 singles chart, peaking at number three. Are you saying this is the one you picked, Ken? Oh, this is easily the winner of the category. This is the one you picked this as well. This is the song that everyone knows. Yay. It is. It, it's funny to hear people sing it too. Like, even now, like, you, you put this on, and like, you say, in West Philadelphia. Born and raised. And everyone knows it. There was a competition. Uh, there's a channel I follow on YouTube, and they did a try to keep singing where you had to sing the right lyrics the whole time. And this is one of the songs to put on there because everyone thinks they know it, but somewhere in the middle, you're going to get lost. There's like somewhere. one or two lines where you're like, oh, "I missed a word there." Uh, license plate said "fresh," and there was dice this in the, the mirror. Me. Like you have to get through it, but but this was yeah, the, it was a sitcom that everyone knew. I would say over Ducktales because I think you had to be a kid at right. that point to really know right, and memorize right. that song. Mine was more like just seeing the audience all sing along together. It was yeah. more of a nostalgia pick. Yeah, but this is one I think any age could know, even people who. Are younger, even these Gen Zers that know Will Smith it. now have probably yeah memorized this. Oh, uh, for did sure. You see, did you guys see the uh, gritty? It was a, it was yeah. a parody, the gritty Bel Air of, of Bel Air, uh, no. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's on YouTube. It's hilarious. Like okay. it's not. It's not supposed to be hilarious, but it's hilarious. Like <laughs> they're not trying to be funny, but yeah. Well, like they're making it dramatic to be funny. Yes. This Got is it. also you guys. Uh, this you guys could pick this one also for tells the story because I this thought sets about up that every yeah. time. This sets up the story of uh, Will. I just I just played by the, Will. The head twist at the end. When he does the, yeah. the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, that's that's, that's the good. winner. Easily. All right. All right. Okay, so the one that you must sing along with. Um, now it's a little bit of a cheat. You might sing, but there is something that you have to participate in for this song. And it is There we go. Ah, uh, yes. yes. I have to do the Rachel during this. You have to do the Rachel. Wait. No one's ready. Right you ready? Hey, we did it! Our time is good. Was great. Well much done. better than the Fresh Guys, Prince yes, stuff. Yes, it was. I think we're friends. Oh, I had to. Oh, oh, I thought you were, you were making a better no, no joke. we're friends. That was no, a bad joke. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it was a terrible joke. <laughs> I thought you were making a bad, a better joke. No, <laughs> no. no. I he was waiting for the bad <laughs> joke. For you. This is another one where if you look at the extended version. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, this isn't as good in the second verse. Yeah. Well, and actually, it was going to originally be Shiny Happy People by R.E.M. was the theme. Ah. And there, and I found there's a version of the title credits with that on the back. And it, yeah. I it feels too heavy. Music. Yeah. It was. It didn't work. It Shiny didn't work. Happy People. Ugh. Yeah. No, Friends is one of those that, yeah. you. I, the, once again, I was at the same YouTube channel. They have a Try Not to Move challenge. Mm-hmm, and they played mm-hmm. that song and almost everyone was just like... 
You have to. Yep, you you do. have to. It's part of it. You do. <laughs> yeah. Everyone so yes. knows that one. I agree. Great I choice. Okay. Great choice. All righty. So this one is very subjective. It's the one that I personally must sing along with every time I hear it. Granted, I don't hear it a bunch, but every time I did, back on Saturday nights, I think it played at 8.30 at night. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. I'm just going to sing. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, you know the lyrics. Invited everyone you knew. You would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, Thank you for being a friend. Bum, 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 bum. So good. That is a good one. That's this one choice. hit number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100 somehow. This is uh, <laughs> uh, written by Andrew Gold. And uh, he said it took him about, I like how we're giving these facts. It took him an hour to write. He says, wow, so he's the longest on this one. Yeah, he says, <laughs> the it's longest. A, little, a little throwaway thing. It took me about an hour to write. This show went from, uh, in this Golden Girls, by the way, went from 1985 to 1992. And here's a weird factoid I found out. There's a spinoff show. There's a sequel show yes. to the Golden Girls. What? I, did know I didn't know that. this till three days ago. Really? Yeah. I remember it was one of those ones that kind of didn't go anywhere. I, was one I don't of those think famous, I want to know. Famously bad spinoffs. It's called The Golden Palace. Oh, no. And the cast returns, no, uh, except no. for Dorothy doesn't return because Dorothy got married in the final episode, spoiler alert, of the Golden Girls. Oh, man. I was so going to watch that. <laughs> you have Rose, Blanche, and Sophia, and they go and they buy a hotel. What? Okay? Mm-hmm. It's the same character? Like the same actors? Same characters, are... yeah. What? And Don Cheadle is the hotel manager, and Cheech Marin is the chef. And there's also a little kid, a little foster kid. Cousin Oliver. Yeah, he's, he's Cousin Oliver. <laughs> yeah. In fact, so this lasted one season. Yeah. Wah, wah. Oh, wow. They actually got rid of the kid in the first couple episodes because the, the, yeah, everyone hated him. How did How'd they, they get, get rid, rid of him? him? <laughs> <laughs> so what, Cheech, did the, what did the chef Cheech do? Cheech was the chef. <laughs> oh, <No, laughs> yeah. no. But I watched the whole episode. It's on YouTube, by the way. You can watch the whole series wow. on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, I have to know. By the way, it has a, a guy singing uh, like a more rocky version of Thank You for Being a Friend. Hmm. And it doesn't work. No. Granted, no. they're still as saucy as ever. These old ladies are <laughs> yeah. sure randy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't work. The Golden Palace. But I, think, I think it manifests by the fact that we all sing along to that. It kind of shows that yeah. it's not just yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, good. good. That's a good one. Joel, what about you? Uh, me, I, once again, I think you guys are going to sing along because I think this is one that just kind of, you want to jump in and, and do. <laughs> <laughs> Not Penny's boat. <laughs> you all, everybody. Hey, you oh, all. man. That's a great one. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> no, no, no. And I know that I, the thing is, I know that my real pick is one that Kent and I have actually sang along together. So it's got the one. Aw. Show me that smile. Oh, yeah. Show me that smile. Why do we sing Don't so waste hard? another minute on your crying. We're going to the end. We're the end. <laughs> the best is ready to begin. If anyone would like to invite us to a karaoke Ooh. night, we, there it is. As long as we got each other. <laughs> Guys, can we do a bacon slot karaoke night? We should. Oh, excellent. Uh, so this is from Growing Pains. We're yeah. from 85 to 1992. Uh, seven seasons, 166 episodes. Now, this one, Kent, was the one where they had nine different versions of what? the theme song, including... Wow. But it's Halloween. all variations on this, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Including a Halloween-themed version. Do you have it? Holiday I version. Don't, I should have I should have pulled the clip of that one. It was bad. It wasn't good. I, wa- it was I like, watched it. Show me that smile again. <laughs> Basically. It was like, show me that smile again. I hate it. Wow. It was terrible. Uh, but like this one, uh, originally recorded by BJ Thomas, who did... Uh, Raindrops keep falling on my head and hooked on a feeling. He wrote oh. both those songs. Wow! But be, he, him, and uh, he did a version for he did it solo for season one. Season two, they brought in Jennifer Warrens from "I've Had the Time of My Life" yeah. theme, and then season uh, that was for uh, seasons two, three, five, and part of seven. What? In season they just jumped. In wow. season four, they had uh, B.J. Thomas sing with Dusty Springfield, and they released it as a single and it actually charted. They had an a cappella version they did for like half a season. I don't know what they they kept trying to remake the amazingness that was that uh, the B.J. Thomas and Jennifer Warren's version, which is the best. Why version. not just keep it? 
But I don't know. But they kept trying to do something different. Honestly, I can't remember much about the show. But this song, Leonardo DiCaprio shows up at one point. He was a homeless kid he that does. they adopted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Near the end. Very, very dramatic. Episode. He was the right. cousin Oliver of Growing Pains. <laughs> no, but people liked him. Uh-huh. I think. No, what I'm saying is they brought in that younger kind of skewed. Yeah, like oh yeah, the kids are getting too old. But this one, I I just love it. Like and it, and it, I love the beginning, the opening credits, how it shows them growing up, and then the you know pictures of them, and then it shows them in the video, and yeah. it's like oh that's so cool. Like I said, they're real family. Sticks in my song. <laughs> I love this song. Uh, Growing Pains is my choice. Such a good choice. That is a good one. The next category. Is a fun one. It's yeah. It's gonna take off some people again. It's the worst theme song. So we already did the worst show best theme song. This is the worst in our opinion. It's just a bad theme song. Doesn't matter yeah. if the show is right. good. It's a bad theme song. I had one chosen, but then I thought about this one, which I choose the monkeys again. So help me. <laughs> I've always hated this song, and I always hated the show. Blossom. Oh yeah. Murder, murder, murder. <laughs> Ain't no good reason for getting should get a camera in here. Fire up your pad and pencil. I'll give you a piece of my mind. Wait, you don't like my Bollock's audition piece as she dances in front of the camera goofily? You know what, Joel? In my opinionation, this is the worst <laughs> theme song. This song is called My Opinionation. That's the title of it, the song? It frustrates me to no end. Ooh. Like, I can't get over how mad I am. It sounds like this. a name of like a political website. Yeah. <laughs> it's sung by Randy Newman. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Not really. So Mike Post and Steve Geyer uh, wrote this. Dr. John. With that, I've been, growl. Wow. I've been to his store before. No, Joel, Joel. Uh, not great. <laughs> no, you have It's not a medical facility. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a real doctor. Uh, so Blossom went from 1991 to 1995. If people don't know what Blossom is, uh, it's a teenage girl living in a house run by men, and she dreams what life would be like if she lived in a more conventional family. That's a synopsis. I don't think that's part of it at all. I don't that's remember that being part of the show synopsis. at all. But yeah, the opening sequence has Blossom filming herself in her bedroom, dancing, performing aerobics, and making silly faces, and pretending to talk on the phone. Isn't that fun? It's so And then in, in later years, they have the cast joining. You have Joey Lawrence with his leather jacket doing the dance, and you've got the drug-addicted brother who became a, a veterinarian, I think. Or a, oh, wow. Yeah, or a vegetarian. EMT. A a vegetarian. vegetarian. <laughs> in season five, the intro was actually cut to... And that was it. And it was just a title card for Blossom, because they finally got rid of my opinionation <laughs> i almost picked that kent you did That's a i good did one. because okay. the thing is i was like i i didn't really like the show i didn't really like i liked six she was good yeah six it. is great pretty sure. yeah um but uh this one yeah you mean I, from battlestar galactica right both yeah okay <laughs> uh but no i i chose one that you guys may not even know but i was listening to tv theme song this came up and i was like uh oh stop stop what are you doing what are you doing Anything? Any bells? No. Okay, not yet. Wait, wait, wait. In the eyes of a ranger, yes. The unsuspecting stranger. This is poetry. That is yeah. Chuck no. Norris oh. talking oh, through this song. You're going to choose Chuck a Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris song? He's going to kill us. He oh, already yeah. has. This is Eyes of a Ranger from Walker, Texas Ranger. Composed oh. by Turk Wilder and performed by Chuck Norris. Wow. So Chuck Norris. He did it all. In, yeah. In his show about Chuck Norris being Chuck Norris, <laughs> Chuck Norris sang the song about being Chuck Norris. <laughs> it actually makes total sense. I want to. I want to read this. Did part he invent here. music? He may have invented music. Yeah, but I want to read this part here. It made me laugh. It says martial arts were prom- displayed prominently as the primary tool of law enforcement, and occasionally as a tool for Walker and, and company to reach out to the community. I have cancer. <laughs> it's not cancer. It was AIDS. But. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> poor kid. Oh shoot. The old, like this song. It just graded up. Like it came up, and I was like, oh, stop, Chuck Norris. But then it all it really does make me miss the Walker Texas Ranger lover from Conan O'Brien. Yeah, I yeah. loved that that bit back in the day. <laughs> but yeah, Chuck Norris shouldn't be doing his own theme songs. Wait, how many seasons again? Well, Walker Texas Ranger went from 1993 to 2001, 202 episodes. Wow. What? Eight seasons. And get this, they That's did a, amazing. They did a TV movie in 2005 that ended on a cliffhanger with a main character getting shot and falling to the ground and they haven't ever followed up on it. What? What the oh, heck? So many people are so mad. You know I they're know. doing a reboot of this one, right? Are with uh, Jared Padalecki no, from Supernatural. Not. Really? He's going to be Walker. No. 100%. Huh. He's already signed on. Yeah. But Maybe those well, questions yeah. will be answered. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, were you going to say stuff about him? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> He's a good man. Uh, but yeah, so Eyes of a Ranger, not a good song, kind of terrible. Okay. All right. My choice for the worst song. This was a hard one, too, because I feel like if it's a bad theme, I'm not really watching the show maybe yeah. but um and the, that's the case with this one it's a show that i have not watched and it is one from two and a half men 
Oh my gosh, Adrian wins. It's awful. Adrian, so you win. I was, it's two guys, words. I'm not kidding. That was my other choice. Adrian, it was Blossom. Oh, this, this is the victory nice. right here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, and the worst thing is, is they repeat Pete this throughout like the episode occasionally, Wait, like when they're doing men. their little men, their little transitions. <laughs> like no, so you get you're subjected to it the whole entire uh, well, show. Not that I've ever watched it, but I know enough to know that. But even like oh. I, I like I never really watched the show, but I remember the opening credits, just them standing in front of a red curtain singing this song. Oh, and they're Millie Vanillying it for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. but like there's, it doesn't just really show you what the show's no. about. They're just saying men, 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 men. I mean, it's basically words. like Kent. Just saying men, <laughs> men, Kent, men. Kent, Kent, I'm Kent, always Kent, saying Kent. that? All, all the time you say that. <laughs> I say done, 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 done. <laughs> what a, yeah, that's it's awful. A good that's the worst song. Yeah, it's it great so much. And it was one of those that yeah. maybe I might have watched the show. I don't know. But the show, but that turned me off. No, it's Charlie Sheen and John Cryer. You weren't going to watch this show. It's on CBS for Pete's sake. It's on CBS. But I may, it may have stood a little more of a chance without that song. Oh, it gives me the chills. Well done. Horrible Thank you. Can we get back to good stuff again? please. Good stuff. Yeah, let's let's go. Joel, you're going to start this one, right? I'll start this one. So we're uh, down to the last two. Uh, This one is called The One That Can Stand on Its Own. (laughs) So this is the one that doesn't need a show. This is the one that could play on the radio and everyone would still love it. This is the one you just hear in the streets. You're like, that's a great song. This is my choice. <laughs> <laughs> I hate oh, you so I much. Oh, I this one. Yeah. <laughs> Hit it, DJ. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this in my car on the way here tonight. Polar bears? Maybe. Uh, no. Uh, Maybe that's right. The one, the one that I chose is actually one that I listen to independently all the time. I enjoy this song, and it's this one. Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? You're not the boss of me, no. So this is uh, from Malcolm in the Middle. Boss of Me by They Might Be Giants. And obviously, I've talked about this on the show before. I'm a huge They Might Be Giants fan. Malcolm in the Middle, by the way, ran from 2000 to 2006. Seven seasons, 151 episodes. You love this show, right? I love this show. Yeah. This is one of my all-time favorite sitcoms. And it's funny because this song, like, I knew They Might Be Giants well before I ever watched Malcolm in the Middle. And this song won the band their first Grammy Award. Wow. They didn't wow. have any Grammys before. I know. Not even for Flood or and anything? It's, it's one of the most commercial, Crazy. No, commercially successful song, singles. This is one of their best known songs. Huh. And I remember I was at a concert for the Amber Giants and they were playing a bunch of their songs. I was loving every one of them. I knew all of them. And they said, this next song, kind of the bane of our existence, <laughs> but we're going to play it. And they played Boss of Me. And I was like, Wow, they kind of and the crowd probably went crazy. I know oh, this yeah. one, yes, <laughs> and that's become their like one of their most. And then they played songs. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Uh, but it's actually kind of funny if you watch the first season of Malcolm Middle. There's a lot of They Might Be Giants music featured in the episodes, like Pencil Rain. I remember I mean, that's kind of cool. Like that, huh. but yeah, yeah, it's like they were kind of had this relationship at the beginning. But Boss of Me by They Might Be Giants. I How feel long is the actual song? Like two minutes. Okay, none of They Might Be Giants songs are very long, and the whole song. Is good. Like I, this is one I can listen to the entire song and it doesn't sound weird to me. But the shortened version on Malcolm in the Middle, which if you don't know, it's a show about a very dysfunctional family uh, just trying to make ends meet. It's hilarious. I really enjoy this one. So there you good go. Good choice. All right. Me. Okay, so my choice for the song that can stand on its own. This is the only one that I actually listen to and have in my library, and it's this theme from Charmed. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> so did you watch this show? Um, I did. Kind of a hate watch, this for is, sure. Okay. For this, sure. this is How Soon Is Now by How the Smiths, How Soon Is Now right? by yeah. the Smiths, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I just, I like the song. I think it's, it could have gone for one that's the best song for the worst show, because it's pretty terrible. Is the show that bad? Because I know pretty, it had a huge cult following, though. It did. I mean, it's pretty trashy, you know, but you hate watch it. But the song is way better than the show. Absolutely. Like the quality itself. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and yeah. It, it, it's so 1990s WB channel. Mm-hmm. It is. But man, that's a great song. How Soon Is Now is a great I song. I really like it. I really like it. I am human and I need, want you to know, need you to know. I need, and I need to be loved. I need to be loved to be loved just like, like everybody else. Yeah. Does. And, I, and I need you now. Yeah. It's a quarter I need after one. You now. Yeah. My song is one I love. I've talked about it on the show. I think I've been made fun of for it before. Probably. But I love it so much and I love the show and it's a guilty pleasure, but I can't get enough. Mm-hmm. It's the OC. California! Mm-hmm. This was on my list too. 
because you are smart. Did this come before the show, or did this made, was this made for the show? This was made uh, just before the show, actually. And then the show came out. They, this was actually, it aired on another, another TV show. They liked it so much in that scene that they used it for the theme here. Mm-hmm. And it's by Phantom Planets, California, obviously. Uh, Jason Schwartzman was actually in the, in the band. What? Yeah. The actor? Yeah. Oh, he, what? And it, you didn't know that? No. Like of Wes Anderson fame, because that's really all he's known huh. for. <laughs> yeah, he was in the band uh, since its beginning, and then this song hit big, and he left the band. Like, I don't know if he just didn't want to be known as, like, a famous rock star, just want to be a garage band sort of guy, but the band, I mean, hit it big. They're one-hit wonders, but they still, this band really, or this song. Who's the band? uh, It's Phantom Planet. Phantom Planet, that's right, okay. And I love the OC. I really do. It went from 2003 to 2007. Uh, is that okay? I mean, I feel like I'm not getting getting enough judgment for it's this fine. one. The no, is, no, that I... definitely takes me back. Yeah, but it's never been one of my favorite songs. But I, I don't hate it. I yeah, like, I like hers better. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> well, this is fine. I'm going to no, be I... sad and listen to Smith now. Right. Yeah. No, I think that one definitely can stand on its own for sure. Oh, I think it can too. Like, yeah. I, I'd actually, since having never watched the OC, I don't associate that with the OC. Yeah, and this oh. is one I actually every time I do a I road associate trip, with the Wizard. The w- California, <laughs> the wizard. <laughs> Every time I drive to California, back. this is the song I will choose mm-hmm. as I drive over the border. So uh, it's, just, it's just perfect. That's good. I I like it's, that. kind of I like ner- that. it's kind of nerdy, it's right? Cute though. Is it cute? It oh, is cute. It's... By the way, I also found a cover version of this song by Alvin and the Chipmunks oh, um, no. for their 2007 Wii video game. It's a rhythm-based video game. No, oh, no. And I almost downloaded it so I could play it here today. Oh no! It's actually kind of good. Oh really? <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Oh. Yeah. So go find Alvin and the Chipmunks, Alvin, California. California. But yeah. Okay. Such well, a good song. We're on to our last song, folks. Our last our last TV show theme song for this episode. Because as we said, uh, you may have spawned a, n- a number of these because there's so <laughs> many so many TV theme songs that we could talk about. But I believe, Adrian, you're going to start us off yes. on our final category. Which is the best overall, Which right? is a very difficult oh. category because there's personal preference. There's uh, relatability to, you know, everyone knows it. Like, There's so many different factors that go to this composition. Yes. Yeah, this was a hard one. And this is where I had so many choices where I felt bad that I couldn't find a place for him. Can I put him here? But there was one that just I kind of kept coming back to. And it is this one. It's Making your way in the world today oh, takes a good one, time. right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, it starts Taking off break from all your so whimsical. Words, yeah. And then it just builds and builds and right? builds. I, I, I do feel like this song is like the Rorschach test of how you're feeling. Because it could be a happy song or a sad song. True, true. true. Very the true. lyrics are actually kind of depressing. Oh, totally. I mean, they get to a good spot. Yeah. But most yeah. of them are depressing. So the original intro... Was uh, because they kind of changed it for the show a little bit. I mean, it was written for the show, but it didn't really, it wasn't relevant to anyone outside Boston. Wait, wait, Kent. Are you saying you picked this one? Absolutely. Yeah. I picked it too. Yeah. Yeah. We all picked the same one. Well, we're so predictable. This is like the best on the ton of lists. Like when I was looking up, like I picked and then I looked at a bunch of best of lists and this kept hitting Rolling Stone and TV Guide also gave it the best song. Yeah. Guys, it's the best song. We'd be wrong not to give it the best song. Yeah. Well, the reason I bring that up is because you were just about to scoop one of my things, which is the original song. So go ahead and say it. (laughs) Because I brought a clip, Kent. Oh, you did? I brought a clip. Okay, go for it. Well, let's explain it first. So. The, the producers saw this song in a musical called Preppies called People Like Us. Yes. And they mm-hmm. said, that, that'll be good if we repurpose that. So they asked uh, Gary Portnoy, who sang the song. A lot of people, by the way, thought it was Woody singing the song, which doesn't make sense because he didn't come on to like season four. Exactly. No, he just sings the Kelly, 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 Kelly. Kelly, 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 Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> um, but they, they saw the song People Like Us and they're like, we want that. And so he repurposed it and gave it to him. And they were like, no, we don't want that. And so then they said, my kind of people. So he wrote a song called My Kind of People. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play a clip for it now, and I just want you to picture in your mind, listener, I want you to picture cheers starting, like, uh, you know, Norm comes over and goes, Norm, Woody makes a joke, and then uh, Sam says something sarcastic to him, he says something sarcastic back, then Carla ends up punching a both in the face, <laughs> Yep, and then this song comes on. My kind of people. I hate it. Is this a cult song? What? My kind of people root for the home team. Making a living. Out in the Cancel out it. The mainstream. No. Cancel this up. This whole show. This is the original. This was the original proposal for Cheers. What? Wait, wait. Listen. 
So he starts talking about Cheers. They actually say the name of the title in there. So my kind of people, if you want to look it up. I guarantee no. the show would not have the legacy it does. No. That's without. exactly what I was thinking. Well, and even the people like us, there's actually, there's there's three different versions you can listen to. There's people like us, and then there's a repurposed people like us. There's my kind of people. There's another song called Another Day. Mm-hmm. They went through a couple different songs, Gary Portnoy did, before landing on this one. And it just feels so good. Like you hear the original Cheers mm-hmm. th- song, and you're like... That feels like home. Yeah. Even though I've never been to a bar in Boston, (laughs) it feels like home. When I went to Boston three years ago and drove by, so there's two Cheers bars. There's like the real one and the TV one. Oh, Mm. uh huh. And of course, just that was running through my head the entire time. And I do love it. Like, so the original, like I was going to say, is uh, singing the blues when the Red Red Sox lose. It's a crisis in your life. I like this part. On the run, because all your girlfriends want to be your wife. Oh, Sam. <laughs> oh, Sam. <laughs> Sam. So good. Oh, Sam. <gasps> and your laundry ticket's in the wash. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yep. you want to go. They, they saw that first uh, original lyrics, and they went, can you make it a little more general? And and honestly, yes. you, you hear that right. first song. It's like making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Um, taking a Take break from break. all your worries sure, sure would, would help, help a lot. lot. You're like, I can totally relate to that. Yeah. But if you guys listen to the full version, yes, it's weird. It is weird. It gets weird. And a little, oh. little strange, like... Some of the lyrics, I'm just like, what? It talks about the kid on Walker, Texas Ranger getting AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange. But sometimes you want to go where everyone knows your name. Yeah. But I, I agree. I think I think this is a good choice. It's a safe choice. You know, I feel kind of like, yeah, we all picked it. At this it's point, safe cool is right. Did, without yeah. even knowing each other, picked it. Right. But yeah, Cheers is definitely one. But do you think do you think that still today, it's the best overall that people would still, yes. even the younger generation would say, oh, Cheers. Yeah. If they don't, they're wrong. Oh. Don't you think? Like, think what? Our theme song's still important. I th- like think of the shows today because even like Se- Seinfeld, you know, boom, mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. that was a dog singing that from Blue's Clues. Um, but- Poochie? <laughs> it was Poochie. But what theme songs are there today? The Simpsons? There's The Office. There's Parks and Rec, which uh, right. are instrumental. But even They're those are short. off the air. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. thinking of Breaking Bad. That was off the air, too. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a current TV show. Survivor has a pretty good opening. Yeah, but it'd be but like, well, it'd be like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Did, yeah. Yeah. It's off the air, too. What's on the air right now that has a good theme song? I don't watch TV. Oh, that would explain it. Yeah. Ooh. I don't like even the good place is just like this. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. And that's all I yeah. really do. Not many. There's no. So yeah, it's not Brooklyn a big deal. Brooklyn Nine-Nine has a fun one. I don't know. We, this is all safe for the other show. <laughs> okay, okay. We're giving so many different options. But uh, let us know uh, what TV show theme songs you think would fit in each category. We had 10 categories. And so you can go through them and let us know what you thought. Because we want to know which ones we missed out on, you know let us know and we will have other shows other categories feel free to send us your categories as well yeah because we will be doing another show like this again i hope to and thank you adrian especially for bringing this up because it's one of those shows like ken said that we went how have we not done one of these i i'm surprised and i'm glad that i got to be part of it it was fun yeah it was fun research. so here at the end of the show we'd like to know is there anyone you'd like to give a plug to or a shout out to oh nothing to really plug but shout out to my family and my friends and yeah. All your friends at Cheers. My friends at Cheers. At Cheers. <laughs> so cheers. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll bring you back to that. Uh, my but kind of people. Thank you, Adrian. And thank, thank, you. thank you for supporting the show. And thank you for being a listener, honestly. Yeah, really my do pleasure. Appreciate it. My yeah. pleasure. All right. But we also would like to thank uh, a bunch of patrons, including Adrian here. Yay. So from the I and the listener Yay. category, well, like I said, Adrian, thank you very much. Yay. Well Adrian done. Gray. Welcome. Also joining you is Terry Finley, a more civilized podcast, Stephen Ross, Chris Drought. Braden Winterton, Spencer Larson, who took the title. He's yeah. the listener of the He's the listener. He is. Uh, Crew Dutler, Infendo Radio, Steve Peacock, Colton Cook, and Jennifer Kilkowski. And from the Bacon Council, that's Nicole D. Hale, Chris Anderson, Ryan Farron, Mots Mudro, and Reverse Listener. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We appreciate all you patrons and all you who listen to our show. We really do appreciate it. Remember, keep an eye out for Luminaria posts for a chance to win a pair of tickets to join us or go by yourself to Luminaria. Yep. But if you want to find me, you can find me at 76 Joel on Twitter. You can find me performing with QuickWits. They perform every Saturday night at the Midville Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to qwcomedy.com or go to the QuickWits Facebook page. If you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram, it's at Kenny3DD. If you want to read my movie reviews, it's ShowtimeShowdown.com. So until next time. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you for this. Oh. 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. Keep in mind, anything you say can and will be recorded and used at the end of the show. True, true. She speaks the true, true. Dad! <laughs> Dad! See? Fantastic. It's good for both of us. Not Jake, though. Who is the Kimmy Gibbler in your family?
when I was young. That was my fun. Hey, I want to win over Winnie Cooper. But what's the show about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually about heroes in a half shell. Oh. Turtle power. It's cool. But rude. Yeah. P- yeah. Pretty rude. rude. Yeah. <laughs> Save it for our Ninja Turtle show. And now we need to have one. List of tuber fungus species. Shifting burden of persuasion. Study of the Hebrew language. <laughs> Study of the Hebrew language. Nova Scotia light and power. Gypsy peace and Vulcan dancer. List of people from Montana. <laughs> is this a Joel joke? No, that is a Joel joke. But it says three lovely girls because I'm pretty sure Jan is in that family. Oh! <laughs> cousin. cousin. He's the worst. Ver- Varicose Baney. Drops of Jupiter by trainee. What does it mean to have a duck blur? <laughs> you don't want to know. It, it's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of like when you smell burnt toast. <laughs> That's so we got to make a stroke. I'm having a duck blur. I feel like I just want right to stab someone in the eyes and smash their head. Take, sleepy, you were sleepy. <laughs> you were really, really sleepy. <laughs> Last name in Montana. <laughs> like DJ sounds. Dillian Jibbershire <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Triple D. <laughs> I know why you want to hate me. <laughs> Mike, check. What's it all about? Oh, where you got to run? Life is a lesson. You learn it when you're through. I don't like how we're, we're flashing our hands <laughs> like the edge off a knife. No, sir. I was it was the 60s. They were high. <laughs> Every listener deserves a finger poop. Thank, thank you. Ah. The whole thing like, no, stop it. It's like I just drank a Sprite. The whole thing took me ah. about 45. Stop it. Show me that smile again. I hate it. Wow. It was terrible. Oh. It frustrates me to no end. Ugh. Oh, stop. Stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's kind of, like ner- it's kind of nerdy, it's right? It's cute, though. Is it cute? Oh. It is cute. You know. Wait for her signal, Ken. Oh, She's no. our guest. You will respect her. <laughs> sit, Boo Boo. Sit. Good dog. Hoo, hoo.